Hey everybody, Fallout here. I'm recovering from surgery from my jaw, so if I sound a little weird, just uh, bear with me. Anyway, I know what you're thinking. Oh good, it must be December because I'm looking at another dumb Thrallway farm. I mean, kinda, yeah, but there is good news. Good news number one, this Thrallway farm is better than others because you get multiple ingredients that you can use together to make one cookie, essentially a free AFK cookie farm without a macro. More on that later. Good news part two, I got other easy farms to show you in today's video, essentially everything you need to make dawning cookies with barely any effort at all. You might also be able to get easy dungeon loot along the way, Pog. Near the end of today's video, I'll quickly go over what god roll drops you want on your dawning weapons, so we're cramming kind of a lot into today's video. But before we talk about how to clean up with a holiday loot farm, let's talk about how to clean up your downstairs firearm with the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Manscaped. Gentlemen, getting organized to take on the Witch Queen is hard, but shaving your junk doesn't have to be. Manscaped is the first and leading brand dedicated to men's below-the-waist grooming, and I've been proudly promoting their products on my channel for a long time. Their Perfect Package 4.0 grooming kit comes with tons of great stuff that you or any man in your life can use to clean up shop, including the beautiful Lawn Mower 4.0 trimmer. Sleek, efficient, and even waterproof so you can bring it into the shower. You should know that Manscaped just released a new in-shower solution specifically designed for men, the new Ultra Premium Body Wash. It's a daily shower gel scented with Manscaped refined cologne and features a luxurious lather for any skin type. It's smooth, luxurious, and smells more manly than true Vanguard and James Bond put together. Infused with aloe vera and sea salt, it gives the perfect balance of tough cleaning and soothing hydration. Keep your skin clean, fresh, and moisturized with Manscaped Ultra Premium Body Wash and keep the hedges trimmed around the base of your tree trunk with the Lawn Mower 4.0, a perfect gift for any guy in your life this holiday season. Head on over to manscaped.com slash falloutplays and get 20% off your order and free shipping. Again, that is 20% off and free shipping when you head over to manscaped.com slash falloutplays. All right, back to the content. And by the way, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Big thank you to those who do. Okay, a quick breakdown for you. When you give people in the dawning cookies, they give you back rewards. Some of those rewards can be taken back to Grandma Levante at the tower and she can focus them into specific weapon drops. So if you want a lot of dawning weapons, you will need to make a lot of cookies. First, you want to make sure that your oven is masterworked. Try and get that done before you bake a ton of junk. Masterworking your oven will make baking cookies cheaper by requiring less essence of dawning per cookie. To masterwork your oven, you need to make one of every kind of cookie available. If you're a D2 veteran and you've already baked every cookie in the game last year, all you got to do right now is bake the two new cookie recipes they've added in this year, which are Star Wars thins and ascendant apple tart and you will be able to masterwork your oven. All right, with that out of the way, you usually need three things to make a cookie, two ingredients and essence of dawning. Essence of dawning can be earned by doing pretty much any activity in the game, so you don't really need to farm it. But if you want to, it's very easy. Let's go over two very quick ways. Way number one is to simply farm the new dungeon boss encounter over and over. I was farming it the other night to try and rake in a few Ias Luna hand cannons. Each farm only took about two-ish minutes, and not only can you get two loot drops per kill, you can also get around 20-ish Essence of Dawning. If you want to learn more about maybe the easiest dungeon boss farm ever, please check the video I made on that farm last week, which I will link down below in the video description and up in the top right corner. Method number two is Wrathborn Hunt Farming, which you can do quickly in a group or kind of quickly alone. Here's the TLDR on that. Open up your lure and equip a prey mod for a Savic Hunt. The other two spots on your lure or you can leave dormant. Load up the Tangled Shore and begin the activity. Hunt down the weakened enemy and launch the final portion of the encounter. When you load in, here's what you do. Whoever on your fire team is the person with the lure, you literally stay back and do nothing. Everyone else on the fire team, move into the cave, kill the boss, and complete the activity. When the activity is over, the fire team leader with the lure should open their ghost and quit out of the activity. You'll be brought back into the Tangled Shore and your lure should still be full. Now you'll have the option to go back over to where you began the final portion of the Wrathborn hunt again and launch the activity again. Just keep doing that. Launch the final portion. Your teammates will go forward while you stay back, quit out of the activity, rinse and repeat. Every time you do that, which takes about under one minute, by the way, you'll get a bunch of Essence of Dawning. If you're a solo player, do the exact same thing. Load up the Savic Hunt and get to the point where you launch up the final portion of the hunt. When you've loaded in, if you are alone, open your lure now and reset 
reset it completely. Now head into the cave, go finish up the hunt, then rinse and repeat. The bad thing about doing that farm alone, by the way, is that you'll have to do that beginning portion of weakening the big bad servitor all over again each and every time. If you got a team, you only need to do that part one time, followed by farming the final boss over and over. All right, now that you've got two methods of hoarding a butt ton of Essence of Dawning, why don't we move on to the other ingredients that you'll need for a cookie. Enter the new and better version of the Thrallway farm. If you're new to D2, welcome to our community. This is the kind of dumb bull we do every year for free loot. You open up the Shattered Throne dungeon, advance through the dungeon until you get to an area where you're up against literally never ending Shadow Thrall and you find a way to kill them all over and over while reaping in free rewards. Now, I've seen a couple of Thrallway farm methods that will easily give you Taken Butter. However, Taken Butter alone, a dawning cookie does not make. If you have a leveled up warlock, we found a very reliable method of AFK farming where you only need two things, Devour and the Necrotic grip exotic on the second infinite thrall area which by the way is the better location go to the top of the staircase wedge yourself into a corner activate devour get one melee and let god take the wheel it might take one or two melees to get going into an unlimited train due to what I'm going to call Thrall RNG, but yeah, very easy to do. Thrall will repeatedly die to Necrotic Grip over and over, and you don't have to do much of anything. However, that will only get you Taken Butter and maybe multifaceted flavors, which together don't make a cookie. If you're a Titan, everyone and their mother will recommend you do a Bottom Tree Sunspot Titan farm. That's fine and dandy, but again, the problem is that you're only going to get Taken Butter and Impossible Heat which again, together don't make a goddamned cookie. Here, we have a way to get both Taken Butter and Electric Flavor together in one AFK farm, which you can combine to make a strange cookie for Xur. It used to be easier to do, but ever since Bungie nerfed the armor mod reactive pulse, I've had to get a little bit more creative. The bad news is that you will need a Titan to do this farm. Put on the Feedback Fence Gauntlets and the following armor mods. Supercharged, Reactive Pulse, Protective Light, times two melee damage resist, charge Harvester, Stacks on Stacks, and Passive Guard. Here's the idea. Make sure you have a sword and pull it out. The armor mod Passive Guard is going to make you much tankier by just standing there holding a sword, meaning you can take a lot more of a beating from the Thrall without dying. Feedback Fence Gauntlets are going to get you a bunch of kills, and eventually you will be charged with light thanks to Charge Harvester. Protective Light is there to ensure you get a little extra protection when near death, and Reactive Pulse, although it may seem weird to combine with the Feedback Fence, can give a little extra extra breathing room. At first, it's going to look like the farm won't work. You're going to be at red or critical health for a very long period of time, but pending Thrall RNG, you won't actually die. I also recommend having 100 recovery and as much Brazil as you can be a behemoth titan and put on fragments that improve your Brazil and your recovery. When doing the farm, again, you want the second Thrallway later in the dungeon, and for this AFK farm, just back up into the corner that I'm in right now at the beginning area. Anywhere else, and you run the risk of getting hit by too many Thrall all at the same time, we're trying to kind of thin them out. You might talk to a bunch of people who recommend you do a macro farm, but I really recommend you don't do that. Bungie apparently does not like it when people use a macro, and running a macro could potentially maybe get you banned. By the way, remember that while doing any farm for cookie ingredients, you want to make sure that if you have it, you have the old dawning ship Starfarer 7M equipped. Apparently, it has a mod called Spirit of the Season, and anytime you get any cookie ingredient, you can randomly be awarded with dawning spirit. The new dawning ship does not have that perk. GG no re. If you didn't know, dawning spirit is what you'll need to give Grandma Levante back at the tower in exchange for a focused weapon drop. Alrighty, now that we've come full circle back to Levante at the tower and her weapon packages, why don't we quickly talk about god rolls. First up, the cold front SMG. I want to warn you though, going in, although the cold front looks good on paper, you gotta know important info right now. One, cold front has a zoom factor of 13, and if you didn't no, that is bad. If you're trying to figure out why the cold front doesn't feel good on controller compared to other all-stars like the Multimach or the Shira, it is 100% because the zoom is bad. Cold front also no longer has the ability to drop with kill clip, vorpal weapon, or rangefinder. Bungie pulled all those perks from the pool. What the f 
Bungie. But anyway, with all that aside, the cold front ain't bad. For PvP, it can roll with Surplus, Quick Draw, Dynamic Sway, and the all new Perpetual Motion, which I think does really well on SMG. It can also drop with Rampage, Swash, Thresh, and Harmony in Column 4, all of which do great in PvP, especially Harmony. For PvE, Subsistence One for All would probably be the role I'm going to try and hunt down. Get a bunch of shots back in the mag, all while very easily cranking up your damage output for a lengthy period of time. Next weapon, we got the old Glacioclasm, which used to be a favorite of mine before every fusion rifle archetype got totally reworked. If you're looking for a good PvP fusion rifle, Glacio is good, but IMO, it's outranked right now by both main ingredient and the plug one pretty badly. Glacio has dummy long charge up time and it'll make you pull your hair out. Still though, if you want a PVP roll, under pressure in column three is IMO a mandatory fusion rifle perk, and in column four, high impact reserves will pair together great. For a PVE roll, Glacio has the awesome and very rare combo of subsistence and reservoir burst. With those two together, you get 25% extra damage and ammo back in the mag if you get a kill, meaning you can reproc reservoir over and over and over. That might not be ideal for killing a boss, but elite and major enemies will get clapped hard by the Glacio, especially right now with particle deconstruction. IMO, if you're going for a god roll Glacio, which I am, go for the PvE reservoir roll. Next, we have the avalanche machine gun. I feel like for PvP, power weapons you can do way better, but if you care, avalanche can roll with surplus, killing wind, Vorpal weapon and tap the trigger. For PvE, you got auto loading, subsistence, swash, Vorpal, adrenaline junkie, and even dragonfly. Overall, I'm not too wild about the avalanche, but it is the only adaptive frame solar machine gun in the game. Pick it up if you care. Finally, we have the second weapon I'm actually grinding for, the Zephyr Sword. Zephyr ain't new, but the perk pool is, and it's the only sword in the game right now capable of rolling with cold steel. Uh, no, no, not him. The the perk, which lets you slow an enemy on a powered sword hit. Apparently though, even regular light hits will currently activate cold steel and you can freeze people in only three light hits in PVE. That kind of opens up a lot of crazy possibilities with the Zephyr, one of them being that if you wanted to, you can activate focusing lens by yourself, aka freeze an enemy with a sword and then deal a ton of light ability damage to that frozen enemy. Titans can power up their own thunder crash and so on and so forth. Now, you can get a Cold Steel Sword for free from Eva Levante right now, but it also comes with energy transfer, which I do not care about. Instead, I would rather get uh, probably either Relentless Strikes or Duelist Trance in Column 3. Relentless will improve your offense and give you more ammo back for swinging away, and Trance will make you a defensive machine. Just get one kill and you'll be brutally tanky in PvE. And there you go. Now you got multiple farming methods for easy dawning drops, some of which you can even do while AFK. Get out there, happy RNG, and I hope you get something good. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.